Hi folks, Matthew here from Disaster Area doing another quick video showing how to configure your mini baby to work with another device. Today's episode covers red panda devices. Let's get started. For today's video we're using a particle V2. So that's the slightly smaller version of the particle that's just recently come out. It has a USB port here on the back panel above the power jack. And the USB port is really important. That's how we're going to get MIDI in and out of this. The following steps will also work with the Tensor, but they will not work with the older red panda devices like the Particle version 1, the bitmap, the raster, the context. So if you have one of those devices, I'm afraid that this is not going to help you very much. If you have a Particle V2 or a Tensor, keep watching. First thing we're going to need to do is plug our MIDI baby into our Mac or Windows PC using the included USB cable. And then we're going to navigate to our website, disasterareadesigns.com, and click on the link in the top bar for the MIDI Baby Editor. Once you've loaded the editor, make sure that Disaster G3 MIDI In and Out are both selected near the top, and click the Read Device button. When the device read finishes, we'll be able to configure our MIDI Baby. So, in order to connect the particle to the MIDI baby, we're going to have to use a USB host adapter. So this is a little cable that we sell here. You can also get them in some other places, but the ones we sell are tested and working with our device. So maybe it's worth the extra buck. And if you get one with your MIDI baby, then you can save the extra shipping. And you'll also need a USB A to mini B cable. So that's the cable that fits with the particle. You can use the cable that was included with your MIDI baby. That one should work just fine. I've got a different one here just for testing purposes. So we're going to go into the globals and we're going to go to USB function and we're going to change this to host. And this is really important because that's how the MIDI baby knows to use the USB port as a MIDI out rather than a MIDI in for connecting back to your DAW or the editor. And now we're going to go on main foot switch. There's a couple of different ways you can set this up. I'm just going to set this for immediate action on press because I don't want any other messages. I only want to send program changes. And then I'm going to go into press and I'm going to say LED color is red because all the red pen LEDs are red or the preset ones are anyway. And I'm going to add a message. I'm going to set the message type as PC, program change, channel one, data is count and send. We're going to do start 0 and end 3. On the particle v2, these four presets correspond to MIDI program changes 0, 1, 2, and 3. So that's what we want. We're going to set 0 to 3, quit edit mode, and then we're going to write device. Now, when you write the device, it's going to stay in USB MIDI mode until you unplug and, and power back on. So you can use the MIDI monitor for testing, and you can look and see that we're sending program change one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. So that looks correct. So those messages are what we want. When we unplug this and plug it back in, it's going to power on. And on the editor, you'll see Disaster G3 MIDI, but it's going to immediately go away because as soon as this thing boots, it puts itself into host mode and now it won't connect back to the editor. If you need to connect it back to the editor after you've already set it to host mode, here's what you do. So unplug the controller from the USB cable and plug it back in. And while the light is flashing, hold the button down. What we're waiting for is for the light to stop flashing and then this LED to blink white one time. So if we hold this down while it's flashing, it blinks white one time and then stops. And if we look at the editor, we can see that G3 MIDI in is here and it, it's persisted. It still says USB function host, and that means as soon as we unplug it and plug it back in, it's going to default back to host. So if you need to make changes, don't forget you need to hold the button down while the LED is flashing. Don't hold it down before that or it'll go into bootloader mode for firmware update. Okay, so we're going to connect our USB host adapter to the MIDI baby. So we're going to plug it into the USB port on the left side, and now we have a full size USB A port. We're going to take our USB cable, and this is just the same one that's included with your MIDI Baby. It's the same 
literally the same cable, and we're going to plug that into the USB port on the back of the particle V2. Again, this also works with the tensor. There's a couple of caveats with the tensor, and we'll go over those in a minute. But now that we've got them connected, we're going to need to power the MIDI baby because we're not powering it from the USB port anymore. So we'll just use a regular 9 volt power supply. I happen to have one here. So 9 volt power supply powers it on, and once it stops flashing, we're good to go. We'll turn on the particle, and it's booted up. And when I press this button, you'll see that as soon as I press it, as soon as I press it, the LEDs change on the particle. So now we have a quick little button that changes the presets on the particle. There's a lot of other stuff you can do, and it's really only limited by your own imagination. If you wanted to connect an expression panel to the Mini Baby, then you could go into the editor and you could say multi-jack is foot switch, sorry, multi-jack is expression panel, and you could edit this action, and then you could set up MIDI CC messages for whatever you want. So CC4 is the expression control. You can have this set up to only control the feedback or only control the blend or the param knob. So you could have that set up. You could instead have external foot switch set up to control the freeze and the division controls in exactly the same way that the main foot switch changes presets. There's a lot of potential options here and it's all going to depend on how you like to use the particle or how you like to use the tensor. So we mentioned using the tensor before. The particle has a very nice convenient way of indicating the presets by showing you on those four LEDs which presets you're in. The tensor unfortunately does not. So while you can connect to the tensor and control it, there's no way to indicate which preset is currently active on the tensor. So we can change presets just fine, but you don't know which one you're on. So if you're going to use this with the tensor, I would suggest that you limit it to maybe two presets or three, ones that you can tell what they are by the sound. We've got lots more videos to come, including some videos on the HX Stomp, Maris, and Alexander pedals. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to be notified when more MIDI Baby videos are available. Thanks for watching.